All right, guys, today we're out here on Rebel Coast once again to keep looking for all the diamonds we're yet to get with the recurve, as well as for all the rares we still haven't gotten. So, on this occasion, in order to hopefully increase our chances to come across one of these trophies, today we'll be visiting some multiplayer sessions where we may come across some interesting stuff like this Max Estimate Lynx track. He may be a level 9, and I would love if that is the case because the last time on Lynx I got was literally on the first week after the release of Rebel Dolly Coast. So it's been almost a year since that, and actually I remember getting that one with the recurve, it was a crazy hunt. I don't recall exactly the exact score of that Lynx, but I remember it was a big diamond, so I really hope this one will also be a level 9. And even though I already got two diamond Lynxes with the recurve, I'ma do my best to get this one as well using that bow as long as it is big enough. Now, I wanna talk about one of the hottest topics in the community right now, which is the potential release date for the upcoming map. Of course, since there's no an official date yet, all we can do is speculate, but if we base our cases on the past releases, specifically on the ones on Summer, we can get a good idea of when this map may see the light. You know, if we take Rebon Tolikos, Rancho El Arroyo, Silver Ridge Peaks, and Yukon Valley as an example of the last four maps released on Summer, we'll see that the thing they all have in common is that they were all released on very similar dates on late June. I mean, look at this, Rebon Tolikos was released on June 28th, Rancho del Arroyo on June 29th, Silver Ridge Peaks on June 23rd, and Yukon Valley on June 25th. So assuming this trend will continue, I think it's safe to say that this map will come out on late June, and considering that they always release the maps on a Tuesday, there are two specific dates on which I think there's a good chance we'll see the release of the Emerald Coast. One of them is June 20th, and the second date is June 27th. This is certainly pure speculation, but if I had to bet, I would definitely say that we'll be able to hunt Emerald Coast for the first time in one of those two dates. Alright, there's the links. Level 8. 24 to 26 estimate. I won't say I'm disappointed because this was quite expected, but the estimate on that guy is kinda sad to be honest. I mean, it literally doesn't leave any room for any kinda surprise, so it's not exciting to kill it. But still, I'm a shoot him. He is down. Now let's see what he scores, we know it won't be massive. 26.52. He's like in the middle between being a level 7 and a level 9, probably a bit closer to be a level 7, so he's a relatively small mythical, and that is another max estimate links to account that is not a level 9. Alright guys, I just joined a different server, and on this occasion I came across the track of a max estimate rock ptarmigan right on this location. You know, this area is very good to find Copper Kelly's, Rock Ptarmigans, Hazel Grouse, and Black Grouse. Specifically, this spot is a place that is normally good to find feed zones because on this area all these species tend to feed close to that road, and if you come here at the feed time of all these animals, there's a good chance you'll come across a good amount of individuals, so it's definitely a place that I owe. Well, it didn't take too long, that's the big one. He was a level 2 with a top estimate of 726, which is a decent estimate. And I honestly wonder if we will ever manage to finally find the level 2 Diamond Rock Ptarmigan. You know, I've seen a few posted, so it's definitely possible, but we have never been close. Well, in fact, I believe the closest I've seen was the time when I got a 705 level 2, which was like the biggest level 2 I've ever seen, Rock Ptarmigan. So I certainly wouldn't discard the possibility of this guy being just as big, but actually, he is really far from being the same size. Unfortunately, he scored pretty much at the bottom of the estimate and didn't end up being just a medium sized gold. Let's continue. And well, I didn't even move, and right next to a place where I harvested the rock ptarmigan, I found this track. A max estimate hazel grouse track. Like literally on the exact same spot. So I really hope this one is a level 3, because in the last couple weeks I've been really trying to find a diamond hazel grouse, and we have found like a lot of max estimate tracks, so I think it's time to finally get a diamond. Now in case you don't know the reason why I've been really looking for a diamond hazel grouse, even though I already have a couple, it is essential because it is one of the species that I'm yet to get using the recurve bow. So if we get lucky this time, and this guy ends up being a level 3, I'm definitely gonna do my best to get him using that bow, because the hazel grouse is one of the rarest diamonds in the game, and if after getting the chance to get one with the recurve we don't take it, it could take us several months before finding another level 3. Alright, it seems he's flying this way, 
Hopefully he's a level 3, let's see. Level 2, up to 433. His top estimate is below the minimum diamond requirement, so there's absolutely no chance he's a diamond. He may be big, but he won't make it. And I gotta say that I'm starting to lose my patience with the max estimates of this species because since my last time on Hazel Grouse, I found like easily 20 of them. Oh! 432.33. What a monster. I honestly was not expecting him to be this big because I believe he had like the lowest top estimate of all the max estimates I found recently and he ended up being the biggest. So if this doesn't prove that the correlation between the score and the estimate is not that strong, then I don't know what would to be honest. No way. Look at that. The first time I saw it, I thought it was a female, but then I spotted him and I realized he was actually a leucistic male. Which is amazing. Like, there's no way to confuse it with a common, because here you can see a difference, and as you can see, it is way lighter compared to the dark. So as soon as I saw it was a male, I was like, that's definitely a leucistic. There's no way it's not. In fact, he's the second leucistic black rouse I've ever seen, we got the first one back on January. And I have to say that it's hard to believe that we're about to get our second because these guys are rare. Like, very rare. And by the way, we spread this guy right here, which is not too far from the area where I got the big hazel grouse. And that's not good. Apparently now they are leaving the zone because the feed time is over. So I fear. Unless we can reach him before. This may be the beginning of a long chase. Now we may be in trouble because chasing birds at night is not the easiest task, and especially when the bird in question is a black grouse, because the black grouse is, in my opinion, the toughest bird to track since they are very skittish. So this is certainly looking like a tough chase. Hopefully it won't, but in case it is, I'm definitely up for the challenge. And I just hope nothing weird happens because we are on multiplayer and, you know, the risk of crashing or being kicked is always there. Oh, right there. It's a hen. She flew this way and perhaps if she is part of the same flock, that may be an indicator that the whole flock will fly towards us as well. And in fact I hear him, but I don't see him. It seems they are flying the other way now, which is quite unfortunate because I really thought we were gonna have a chance here. Oh, no way. Apparently the whole flock flew over me and I didn't see him because they weren't making any sound for some reason. And they are coming back. Alright. That's him. Finally. We just dropped our second leucistic black rouse. He seems to be a bit different than the first one. I'm honestly not completely sure, but I think the pattern is different. You know, there are multiple variations for the leucistic black grouse, so it's very possible. And yeah, it is in fact quite different. This one has black feathers on the back, so it is definitely a different variation, which is fantastic. The first one I got was almost entirely white, except for the neck. And this one almost resembles more a Bible pattern. Frankly, it is really hard to choose between the two, because they both look amazing. Alright guys, we're on a different session now, and on this occasion we have the track of a potential level 3 Willow Termigan. We will see if it is in fact a max level, hopefully it is, because the Diamond Termigan is one of the few diamonds I still haven't gotten with the recurve, and from all the remaining species, this one is without any doubt one of the most challenging. And I'm not talking about the difficulty of the trophy, because the real challenge will come at the moment of the shot, since the Termigan is one of the species that must be shot in the air to give you full score. So if we really wanna get both the Willow Termigan and the Rock Termigan with the recurve, we must show them while they are flying which of course will exponentially increase the challenge. 
Now I wanna give a quick shout out to AlexLeg67 who is currently on the same session as us and he's been supporting the channel which is something that I really appreciate. Maybe our Tarmigan? And yeah, that's a level 2 with a huge top estimate up to 794. It's unlikely but it may be a level 2 diamond. I've actually seen quite a few posted on Discord, so I wouldn't be surprised if this guy makes it, although we didn't get him with the recurve. So let's see how big it is. 745.49, he's decent. We tracked it for 3.71 kilometers, and he's certainly not a bad way to conclude this hunt, even though he's not a diamond. <laughs> 